Guys, in today's video, we're going to be spectating some trios. Rebirth, baby, it's back. And all I got to say, this is the most fun I've had in, in Call of Duty since Warzone 1, by far. And I'm not the type of guy that loves nostalgia. It's just because this map design is so good. It's got cover. It's got concealment. It's got rotation strategies. It's got, it's got everything, man. You guys enjoy the video, leave it a like, subscribe today, and let's dive into this shit. All right, here we are starting off with trios, and right now, off the rip, Batosia is in a pretty bad spot. His teammates have an angle on these guys here, but he needs to start thinking about how he's going to reposition to engage in this fight or bail away. Now, I want to encourage you guys in the resurgence, especially Rebirth, engage as many fights as possible. The beautiful thing about this map and the reason why it's the best resurgence map around isn't because of nostalgia, it's because of how the map's designed which encourages fighting, despite how many people are playing. There's a lot of cover and concealment throughout this map. Meaning you guys can pick fights and if you feel a little pressured, you can bail away most of the time. It's very rare you're gonna get caught in the open unless you're just playing with absolutely no movement. I do like the fact that Knight, Knight Knight, I like that, is uh is getting hella aggressive. Let's go spicy at him and see what he's up to. Rocking the shotgun. I definitely respect the shit out of that. Now, we saw the enemy land on yellow right now, and yellow is actually by his lonesome. But he's handling his business. That's really all that matters. Now, this map gets crazy. Gets absolutely crazy. But I want to encourage you guys to always play as a team. But I also want to say this. You don't have to. One of the best things about this map is the fact that, again, talking about cover and concealment, you can really play solo and dive into a lot of fights, especially in duos and trios. Squad's a little bit more difficult, but it's definitely possible. Teams will be stacked. They will be camping, but you'll be able to pick off a lot of teams that aren't playing together. Similar to this one here. So just engage in some fights and get your kill count up. Look, the first day of the map just completed. And it amazes me how many players are already camped up. This is the time you guys need to be out there learning the map, practicing movement. Fuck your stupid, shitty stats. No one cares, all right? And I know I might hurt your feelings. I don't care. Look, forget your stats. Get out there, get in fights, practice your movement, practice different jump spots on buildings, and just learn the terrain. That way, if you do get pressed, you know the map, you know how to bail in and out and kind of break away from the enemy, and then you can re-engage. It's going to be hard for you guys to learn when to bail out, when not to bail out. If you guys are just camped up, I mean, if you take a fight right here and you start getting shot at and you don't know what the map looks like, you're just going to jump to the first thing you see, but it might put you in a worse spot. Oh, yeah. Now, the sniper's not really taking shots. He had that one shot, but he sat there for too long. Again, if you're trying to snipe, guys, you got to practice your shots. Just shoot quick. Get that reflex. Get that eye-hand coordination down. Otherwise, you're going to be in the same stagnant bullshit he's in his entire life. Sitting there ads on us for nine minutes before you ever pull the trigger. <laughs> Let's go back to yellow. Yellow seems to be just loving the solo life. Now, early and mid game, splitting off is okay. But if you guys are trying to practice getting better, you need to practice your aim, your movement. I encourage you guys to stay. You don't have to be locked tight, but stay around your team. That way you can help each other out and prolong your fights. If you guys are just getting in a fight and dying, you're probably not getting a lot of practice in your gunplay. But if you guys have teammates that are helping you prolong the gunfights, you're getting a lot more bullets down range, and you're probably getting a lot more reps in as well. I do like the fact we got the knock, we got the crack, so he's going to go ahead and push this. The enemy will already be up by the time he comes, so you want to stay aggressive with it because they're going to be plating up. At this point now, they've already played it, so instead of just full sending, we need to play a little bit passive. You just wait. Nice. So you don't want to just jump down there. What I thought he was going to do is the moment he saw him, he's going to jump on him. But you run the risk of the game. The enemy plating up sitting there looking for you and shooting you. And that's exactly what the enemy did. The enemy didn't have plates, but he did turn the corner and look at us. And if he would have just bailed off, I still think we won the fight, but if he was plated up, we probably would have lost. So you want to chase enemies, but you don't want to chase them so long that they basically end up baiting your ass, right? Chase quickly. If the chase lasts more than a few seconds, kind of play it a little bit more patiently because you never know where his teammates are. You never know what kind of tools he's got. I don't know what this dude's doing. Your boy seems like he's not really that that bad, but then he starts looting. He, he sees box. He's like, I got to get it, Savage. All right, battle rage it up. Now, I don't know about you guys. We we used the squad rage a few times yesterday, and with the exception of not being able to see a damn thing on my screen, bro, I feel like it was the exact same shit. Now, has anybody been down here yet? I'll be honest. I'm too pussy. <laughs> I don't know if there's like a scuba tank or some shit, but I'm not swimming down there. Mm -mm. Hey, if you're watching the video up to this point, that means I'm not doing a terrible job. So make sure you hit the like button on the video and subscribe to the channel for more upcoming content with us just trolling randoms and 
hopefully making you guys better players. And look, when it comes to resurgence maps, rotations really aren't that big of a deal. However, Rebirth was designed by Treyarch, meaning people with brainstems and IQs. Once it gets to like, not the next zone, but the zone after that, you really need to say F everything else and start going after rotations. If you're in a bad spot, rotate instantly. If you're in a good spot, rotate instantly. You guys want to start grabbing the high ground. And we'll talk about that more at the end of the video, because again, that's what's costing you guys a lot of your games is just not really paying attention to things you need to pay attention to. What the fuck is he doing? All right, not everybody was born to think, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't see the glint either, so I, I, there's a sniper. So a situation like this, when you don't see the sniper glint, your best bet is kind of just move around try to bait the shot and track where the tracer came from that's the only reason he was able to really see it now again regardless of fire sale or not you want to pay attention to your money so many times players are just running next to buys and not spending anything this team's definitely not part of that and you want to abuse the hell out of this now look we have a loadout here we have a loadout here i like the loadout play that way if we die and we come back we can go right back to it if this zone closes in and that becomes out of bounds it's kind of a waste and that strat right there is if you already have your loadie. If you don't have your loadie, by all means, throw it on you and get your loadie. I'm just saying, because it's late game, if you do have your loadie and you should at that point, go ahead and throw it deep in the zone. That way, again, it's kind of a spare. And that's that's a fire sale play. You don't want to waste a lot of money um, if it's not a fire sale. But your boy had, what, 15 grand? Why not? Why not? Oh, oh. Yo, boys got turned on. I was about to critique him because he was shooting the guy in the building and he was out in the open. Situations like that, when you see the enemy, I don't mind you getting some shots off, but once the enemy unpeaks, you want to run up to cover. He tried to take that fight in the open and he almost got clapped by the guy to the right-hand side. Thank God that dude had no thumbs. Holy shit. Uh, we were dead to rights. There, there, there's the PDS. I played yesterday for seven hours, dude. Maybe eight hours. And uh, I was trying to see if there were PDSs in the map. Didn't find one. Didn't find one. All right, so guys are above us. We need to think about getting rotations. I want to go ahead and get the hell out of here. We have smokes. So if we get we, if we get pressure, if he has high alert and he gets the alert, if he gets shot at, just throw the smoke down and play your life. Now, we need to hurry up and get to this angle. Now, when you're holding this, trying to take this fight, that's fine. Just be aware of the left-hand side of the map. And maybe your boy's teammates that might be up there as well. And I said that because I didn't want him to jump down. I wanted him to just keep playing that in case the third teammate was up there, but it's okay. All right, Blue's going up there regardless. And look, these games are sweaty, but take up the grain of salt, man. This map's a lot of fun. Uh, it's probably the most fun I've had since Warzone 1, to be honest. This just, it's not even the nostalgia factor of it. I'm not a nostalgic kind of guy, but it's just the way the map's designed. It's it's beautiful, dude. You can catch people who are rotating super late out in the open, especially in game. You can break away with all the countless cover and concealment. I mean, think about tents, bro. If you guys want to get better at this game, start landing tents. This is a great place to practice your movement, your bail aways, your reach house, all that stuff. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I do think the audio on Rebirth is really fucked up. I feel like the gunfire, I feel like the precisions and the clusters and the nuke alerts, they're so loud. If any of that's happening, you don't hear no footsteps. So I'm hoping we get a, a, a tweak on that here soon. I mean, it's I mean for me it's stupid noticeable. Maybe I'm I'm going I'm going old. Look at me, I'm bald. So maybe it's a me thing, but I don't fucking think so. One of the things that made me upgrade my controller to a controller with paddles was literally Rebirth Island. Back in Black Ops Four, I was getting dominated because I couldn't move and operate the buttons at the same time. My hands just physically couldn't learn claw. It is what it is. So Rebirth is a reason why I actually upgraded to controller with paddles. Guys, there's no better feeling being able to move around the map and keep your fingers on the sticks while you're plating, jumping, sliding, or even reloading. Yeah, dude, it does everything, man. It's amazing, guys. But if you are in the market for new controller, guys, check out aim controllers today. Use code SAVAGE at checkout for a massive savings, guys. So when I look at this zone, is it gonna rotate to the water? No. So 50% of the rotate, meaning the circle when it shifts can't shift to the water. I mean, I guess it could, it used to, but they fixed that. So it's got to shift to land, meaning that this rooftop here, this corner will most likely be favored-ish. Now playing the rooftop is going to be very important in this. Now, if you and your teammates are up there together, you can really play it well because if the circle does shift to prison, 
then uh, you got a great hold on anybody at buy station or even anybody under you because with this rooftop, you can still dolphin dive jump to the land over here and then you can kind of play the, the terrain right under the prison gate. But if you guys are like, I gotta get center zone, you go over here to buy station, you go over to here. Buy station is not a terrible play because there's a buy there. But again, with this circle here, I really want you guys to be focusing on the high ground position and what actually might happen with the next shift. However, this is a zone where you guys don't have to pre-rotate. You can kind of slay out and gatekeep everybody. We know that this is safe because green's there. We know nobody's down here. So, I mean, technically, there's not even a reason to pre-rotate with this situation because everyone was playing in the prison. Guy above us. I don't know if one of these guys got a gas mask, but they need to help out green. I would go for rooftop play right here, brother. No, bro. I would, I would have had both of our teammates go for the rooftop play. Now, what's questionable is the fact the guy above us knows that this guy got knocked, and he should have heard himself for us, but he didn't chow. Why? Because it's a one v three, and he didn't do the simple math. With that guy being knocked, and you heard the res going off, he had to have. He should have known that it was a one v two, and one guy's got to go for the res. So I think that was an easy, easy read for him. He should have made the play because what's going to happen now is we're going to hold him. So his only chance of winning just vanished in front of his eyes. A lot of you guys get super pressured because you feel outnumbered, but it's kind of the only thing you can do. If you have a play, you have to take it. It's better than waiting for the inevitable. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave it a like, subscribe today, and I'll catch you boys in the next one. Peace.